Welcome to the next stage of things. So I can't remember what video this is now, but here we have time to put it all back together again, but can't rush it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some clear, whatever that stuff is called, some clear nitro on the front of here. So I'm gonna put on a gas mask for a minute and I'm going to, we're going to, uh, shoot that with shoot that with, with some nitro and we're going to leave it stand for a while so we've got 60 degrees humidity in here which is pretty good uh, for a change and i don't know where i'm going to be able to place this uh not the best places in the universe we'll go there Okay, let's check what we've got here. Stuff is right, so we're just going to put a layer on here to prepare this for attaching the detail. So put it right there, right there. Here, but here we go. There we are. Uh, just a, a quick dash. Okay, so it's not a lot to do there. And we can place this on here. What? No, we don't want to do that. Where can we place this to dry? Uh, probably better off placing it like so. There we are. Sorry, terrible camera work. Okay, that's going to dry. So, uh, let's, let's, let's put that there. Let's put that there. Let's move him off to the side. See if I'm handy a bit later. Now, I'm not too worried about the about the amount of spray stuff there because it's um it's only a small amount. So here we have the body which I've uh, basically I don't know what the word is why well, I wooled it back to a nice soft sheen satiny sheen. So the kind of game here is to see what we've got in terms of bits and pieces. So we've got our thingy thingy thingy. We've got our P90 shaped pickups that we've got to you know, fit in and uh, attach and wire in and so on. And then we've got somewhere over here. Obviously we'll stay away from headstocks for a minute. We've got our nut. I don't know if that was a temporary one, I think it was. Bridge, Bigsby, Bits and Bobsby. But the main thing is we need to get in here now is we need to, um, we need to, oh, what's the word? Uh, the word begins with shield and ends with shield. So we're gonna do some shielding, see what we got left in the way of stuff. That's all a bit sticky. Now, I'm gonna do some shield shielding. Um, this is what we're doing now. This is attached to, so we're going into, uh, we could do, we could do, it's got to go down the side. I don't know, let's, shall we? Uh, no, 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 no. Is that raining? I'm lucky I brought the washing in before I came up here, isn't it? Do you know what? I think I will not do it that way. I think I'm going to use tin, no, copper foil. Since I have acquired some, somebody very kindly sent me some, some copper foil and shielding foil and some, uh, a, 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 uh, whatever that thing is called. You know what I mean, that thing. A, um, capacitor. 
but an odd, odd rated capacitor, one I don't need or didn't ask for from anywhere. Anyway, so I'll bring up my temporary cutting block. So we gotta get some, we'll get our foil into these places. So let's see what we've got. Halfway along there. So this is a bit of a boring long-winded thing because once we've done this, we've then got to um, next thing to do is to do the actual wiring up, fitting the hardware and wiring up. So this is going to go on quite a while, and I'm, because I'm doing this setup in realish time, there's obviously the things I didn't show you tons of was I didn't show you a mile of doing all the uh, true oiling, I kind of let you see it with a, that just sort of happened magically, really. Um, and uh, the thing about shielding that I've learned, by the way, is that shielding is can be your friend, but it can also be a bleeding great pain in the what's-its, because if you get it wrong, the shield, well, if you get it right, in a funny sort of way, the shielding is, um, it's just sort of waiting there to catch you out. And what I mean by that is, um, if you get it right and the shielding is fully um, grounded, so it acts as a Faraday cage, then actually what it risks being is uh, a point to short out things you don't want to short out. So there's kind of especially in a take a little spot like here in the uh the sorry not the worst picture in the world here in this bit with the switch for example um there's a real risk of the if it's tight not much space there's a risk of the um hot lugs of the switch touching against the grounded shield and that's what that could then sort of cut off your sound altogether and you have no idea why it's not playing. So you have to make sure that if you're going to use shield in this way, you have to be confident that your components that shouldn't be touching it don't touch it. Another way of being certain is to, um, or to kind of protect against that, is to do the shielding, is to get it grounded, and then you could um, cover it over. So the shield works as a shield, even if it's hidden underneath some, let's say some Gorilla tape or something that you've put in there to keep everything away from everything else. So it doesn't have to be showing in the sort of coppery, shiny business that we've kind of got here. Um, and sometimes when I'm, quite often when I've got a, a switch that I know is too tall and it runs the risk, let's say we've upgraded a switch, in, in a cavity that wasn't really made for that type of switch, then you can run a risk of it grounding out. So a, th a clever thing to do at that point is to just put some, I suppose you call it, what would you call it? Uh, insulation, so some tape down that acts as an insulation and that will prevent the, the uh, lugs of the switch hitting the shield and that's quite common when you upgrade things in Chinese factory type guitars or kits. They're, they're often built for a small component or a you know, shorter switch or that sort of thing. And uh, very often we go merrily into upgrading and we buy the big, you know, the full size pots and whatnot. And we think we're doing fantastic work. And then we don't realize that the, don't ring. The body cavity, for example, isn't wasn't built for that. And before you know it, we've got a um, bit of problem with something grounding out. So always be aware of that. Um, quite often, you can rush on and get into get all excited about upgrading things, and before you know it, um, you find you've got a uh, pots that are too big for the cavity and um, that's another common one so lots of inexpensive guitars will use sorry will use a uh, cheaper smaller pots 
um, and sometimes just smaller, good quality stuff, just for the convenience of um, the size. Um, and then before you know it, you'll go and buy some new pots and get them installed. And before we know what's happened, um, they don't fit. That's quite common as well. So I'm going to put these up. So this is longer drawn out, um, slower process than uh, doing the... Ah, uh, now, hang on. Let me just think this through. These are, no, that's fine. We'll carry on with this. I was going to say these are, because they're, the pickups are going straight onto the wood, then there's a chance that this shielding will be visible. And actually it doesn't look so great having shiny uh, copper gleaming back at you, but these are very snug fitting. So I expect them to hide most of what's under here. Um, yeah. So the thing about the thing about shielding is, and this was something I didn't really figure out until a bit later on in the game, is you've got to um, you've got to make uh, you've got to make a continuous cage all around your components and your wires if you want to shield them, um, and that cage has to be grounded and continuous. So. A lot of people I've seen many, many times put on shields and then don't ground them because it's, that's the bit they weren't sure about. Um, and if you don't ground them, they don't act as a shield. So it's a bit pointless. So what I'll do is once I've got this uh, together, I will, um, I will then run some grounding wires through here and ground them all up Till they meet back at the cavity where they'll be grounded to the uh, jack input the ground from the jack where it comes into the guitar so they'll all be continuously connected up that should give them a chance of acting as a shield to the best of their abilities as you can see what i'm having to do here is to uh, blast it that was too short what am i doing i misread things so this is a, a tricky part, is getting this, getting this to cut flush to the edge of your cavities. The, the um, blade can get um, thing blunt pretty quickly, but the idea is you want it nice and flush to here. And it's got to look cool. Now there's a hole, the cavity comes through here. So we've got to poke that a tunnel, I should say, exits here. So we've got to make sure that is available to put the wiring through. Uh, mainly so we don't forget where it is. That comes through somewhere about there. <laughs> so this is a, a sort of long winded part of the process really. Um, as I said, Painting with the shielding paint is actually a quicker way of doing this, but it's um, it's not quite as satisfying. Now these this has sunk holes which are very difficult to fill, and they're designed to take the the screws from the pickups. Now that won't be a, an issue here, so I don't think we need to worry about those. So I think we'll just get those in place and sort of ignore the holes altogether really um, anyway. uh, but we will be we're screwing the pickups around into the wood here so we need to know where that is and make sure we don't um, miss go down into one of those holes okay so that one's pretty much done. It, it doesn't matter if there are little tiny gaps. I mean, it still is continuous, even if there's a small gap going on there. Um, it's continuous because the rest of it is all connected. And it's not like it has to be water or air tight, if you get what I mean. 
Um, but there's one done. One done. Keep all the rubbish ready to throw. So you just have to kind of bear with me while I do these. Thank you to the anonymous donor of these materials. I'm very grateful. I didn't actually order anything, but it has come in handy. So, oh, wrong bits. Those bits go there, those bits go there. So at 60% humidity currently, that's a pretty good um, humidity level for doing finishes. Um, so it's convenient to not have to fire up any heaters or dehumidifiers. It will just pretty much go on the way we want in one go. So plan now for this is, because we've already done the frets, don't need to worry about them. They're ready to, just to be re, neck refitted, guitar restrung, and away we go. Um, I have got a, a new nut ready to go in place because we used a sort of temporary one for the setup part of things. So we've got a new nut ready to fit and that will take a little bit of precision work. But I think the, the hardest bit I was going to say is uh, fitting up the wiring. And I just got a sudden thought that I didn't bring my wiring diagram, but actually it's a pretty standard thing. It's two P90s um, in a three-way switching operation. The only difference being is the switches up there. So um, I can just draw it out on the board and work from that. We're using uh, linear pots, not um, we've got any reverse taper uh, pots, so just linear for the volumes. And of course they will be wired up left-handed. I'll have to sit down and draw that up off camera before we get stuck into anything so i don't waste your time or mine on the video um, so again we've got a hole there and then we've got a hole here coming through there and then it's going to go down there yeah, it's under there so it's got to go in through that bit okay so this time I do have to make an opening available. I'm just running the stuff, stuff, that coppery stuff up the um, sides a little bit just to make sure there's contact. Um, Yeah, I didn't expect rain, but oh well. Um, so, it's been happening in the reloved world. Um, Got quite a bit coming in, so I'm pleased, happy to say. I was wondering, I was about to go a bit quiet for a minute, it seemed, but now it's suddenly I've got an order book full for the next few weeks at least, which is good. I'm definitely not complaining. Um,
Although I have to say, you know, it still all seems a bit surreal and unimportant compared to the situation we're in in terms of politics and stuff. Um, very difficult to, very difficult. And I'm, I don't think even right to put that out of my mind. And in a part of me wants to say, oh, just, you know, get on and do your stuff and don't worry about it. And another part of me thinks, wait a minute, this is, this is the most important thing we're currently facing. Whether I would like it to be or not, it is. Um, and this is, you know, a game changer isn't the word, but you know what I mean. This is a, a once in a lifetime, <laughs> could be the end of lifetime situation. So, uh, I don't, that's the hole, there's the hole, in you go. Um, yeah, so it's a, uh, it was very strange to be you know, putting on the news. Um, I was sort of talking to Adam on Facebook Messenger earlier, and he was saying how he, he's just avoiding the news. And I partly wants to, but I can't bring myself to not know. It's not that I can change anything, but I don't, I don't want to be... I don't like the feeling of being caught out um, when it goes wrong. I have to say, you know, I think, you know, I talked about this at the beginning of the situation way back when, and uh, I haven't really, well, no, have I, I'm not sure I knew all what to expect back then. Um, I mean, it was worrying then, and it's, uh, I find it extremely worrying now, so uh, I don't, I really don't think that things are any better. I, the, the more I've learned about the situation and the game that Russia's playing, it's global politics game, the more concerned I am about the outcome of this and where it sort of an inevitability of, about it. Um, because if, uh, if Russia, inverted commas, wins, then it's, you know, it'll take, take over Ukraine and that's the end of that chunk of Europe, dem democratized Europe, um, and becomes a, you know, a Russian vassal state or whatever they call it. Um, and then, and yeah, if if the Ukrainians win in the commas, we force Russia to some sort of position of defeat and the Russians aren't going to permit that and they're just going to do whatever it takes to quote unquote win on the battlefield which will either be trillions of men and, you know an infinite cost in human lives which we don't seem they don't seem to have any compunction about um never did historically by the looks of things or um they go and use tactical nuclear weapons in, in which case we're pretty much over tipped over the edge into the unthinkable you know nuclear confrontations which which have been most people who lived through the cold war and such have, have spent their lives praying never came about and then we'll, we'll finally, to our horror, get there. Um, I can't help but think that's a very, the way it's going at the moment, I uh, can't see really any alternative outcomes. 
permit. There's no, there's absolutely no sign that Russia has any serious interest in the negotiation. Um, it just wants what it wants and it will do whatever it takes to get it. And with a population that's now threatened into compliance and silence, I mean, ever more than it ever was, it's a, it's a kind of scary prospect, really. And Putin has got complete control over media and the narrative in Russia. And I think what's also worrying is the is the, the internet is absolutely awash with, I suppose you could call it, trolls, Russian trolls, you know, people who uh, push the Russian, you know, the, the formal Russian uh, line. which of course is what we know from recent history, they seem to do really well anyway. Um, but it, and then you find that half, you know, a great chunk of your own population is, is brought into the Russian story as well as there being kind of proper good old fashioned paid up trolls sitting in factories writing uh, anti-Western content stirring up heated debates it's quite quite a frightening period of time um, and it's it's really i find it really saddening you know when i when i was growing up i think i've said this before in, in videos but you know i grew up thinking dreaming that we were heading into a sort of crazy religion free era you know where dogma and superstitions and stuff were going to be a thing, a thing of the past and that science and, and reason were going to be sort of dominant things you know in that wonderful age of technology and discovery and so on but um, it doesn't seem to be that way and, and it's now kind of all about who controls the, the stories. So you can see here, is my, that's my bridge ground. I always put too much on it because I'd rather there was too much than not enough. He says dropping the tin foil on the ground. I've got, um, tin foil is a luxury. I've got, I've actually got a load of uh, aluminium foil up there that works really well as well. So we don't have to worry about running out yeah so um i think the thing that i find really strange is how to find when i find myself at the place in history where i don't actually have genuinely don't have any optimism about the outcome of this there being a happy resolution I and mean, how can there be when tens of thousands of Ukrainians are already have already been murdered destroyed um, how can there be when great historic cities have been laid bare for whatever reasons you know it's a tragedy whatever whatever it should be a tragedy actually whatever political stance you have and yet what I notice is that for the people who declare themselves pro-Russian or pro-Putin, it seems to be, goes hand in hand with no compassion or no sadness for a loss of beautiful cities and human lives. It seems, it seems pro-Russian pro thinkers or sentiments all share a kind of heartlessness about the scale of pollution, destruction, human sacrifices seems to be seems when when you hear those people argue argue even even if they're real people, which I'm 
no, probably aren't, but when they argue, there's no, God, it's a tragedy, but there's no recognition of the suffering. It's, it's a price worth paying for whatever the dream is that they're espousing, or the, you know, the ideology. And that has always depressed and frightened me when somebody's ideology is so corrosive that it, it takes away people's humanity towards each other. And I find that, I find that horrible, truly horrible. So, yeah, the, I think the weirdest thing is, is, is carrying on with so little positivity anymore and I feel I feel ashamed in a way for my kids that I don't have anything upbeat or hopeful to tell them knowing that they must be afraid in this situation too I mean some or worried whatever you might call it they must have concerns and I have nothing positive to tell them um, and I, I feel somewhat ashamed of that but I can't lie can't make it up and go oh the russians you know that once they once they've had their their claims acknowledged and validated they'll they'll settle for a fair and just peace well they ain't gonna we know that that's a tragedy they just ain't a gonna so they're gonna by the looks of it, they're going to go on and on and on into Moldova and that where Lithuania and wherever else he needs to be to bring back his his power and his version of how things ought to be in the Soviet sorry not the Soviet world the Russian sphere of influence. Anyway, so yeah, not not usually a negative or downbeat individual um, but in terms of seeing some alternative down the line I'm afraid I don't see any um, I sort of got somewhere to that place where I start to think you know as I think I said before anyway you know is, is peace at any price really worth paying for? You know, is peace, is, is, oh, sorry, is, a, is survival at any price, even if it means the destruction of Ukrainians' freedom and their lives? Is that, is that okay to, to prevent maybe a bit of nuclear holocaust? You know, is there, a, is there a utilitarian argument that says, you know, I've tried it I, for size, saying, well, look, much as I hate the idea of blah, 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 um, if it really came to it and the choice was between the loss of some millions of uh, Ukrainians or billions of people around the world in a, a nuclear Armageddon, well, of course, the sensible pragmatist would, utilitarian would, would go for the smaller number of the two. And, and why on earth wouldn't you? Um, I suppose the answer to that is because you you have to live with yourself afterwards, and you have to live with what you're left with, um, which is somebody who's going to do similar again as soon as it, they feel they can. Um, and then you tell yourself, well, maybe they won't, maybe they'll have got what they need. And then you find yourself bargaining with reality, hoping hoping that maybe maybe you're right, maybe, they, maybe Putin will have got everything he wants and just maybe he won't strike out for any more. And, uh, and then you, you kind of feel you, you think to yourself, would the, would the Ukrainians settle for that? You know, would the people who really know what Putin's capable of settle for that? And you can see, looking straight at the situation, they aren't settling for that. They aren't 
negotiating because they know there's absolutely no point. You know, and and I see some very reasonable people who I have always respected, admired hugely, talking about the, um, you know, that this has got to be a negotiated settlement. And every logical, sensible part of my spirit and existence says, yes, that's got to be the right approach. You know, how can anything work unless it takes on board the needs of both parties, you know, bears in mind the, the requirements of both parties. And then you think to yourself, wait a minute, is it really that it's that even handed all the time? Or is it, or is it in fact, you know, there are just some times when you, you can't, or the choice has to be that you just can't live with it being that way. So for example, you know, you think there was a time during the Second World War where people were doing exactly the same, wondering whether, you know, Hitler would stop there. You know, maybe if they traded the Sudetenland and whatever else, the Anschluss of Austria, you know, maybe, maybe that would be it and we could all then settle back into merciful peace in Europe. And, uh, and eventually, I think, you know, there has to come a time where people said, or there came a time where people said, actually, we just can't settle for that because it's, it's, it's an evil that's going on. It's not, it's not acceptable in the straight sense of the word. We cannot accept this, we cannot live with it just for the sake of sparing ourselves from the strife. And, and so, the UK and England went to war, Britain went to war, you know, in support of Poland and um, and looking back on it now, you know, you can have all kinds of arguments about what about this and what about the British who did that and what about the way we've always so on and the other and, and there are all manner of what abouts that we can, we can of course bring into play. But really faced with that again could we honestly have done any different could we really have uh, not gone to honor or you know gone to help poland after germany's invasion could we really have stood back and said no nah, you're on your own sorry you know it's all right we're just going to keep hanging back and hope that he doesn't sort of put us on his target list um i, I just would we have would we have looked upon ourselves with pride or shame for, for if we'd have done that? And I just think, of course, it would have, it would have been a national source of shame. I mean, it's the fact that the the amount of appeasement that went on in the first place is still looked on as a, a source of eternal shame. Then, if, if we didn't do anything at all, it would have to be far worse. If we managed to preserve peace by triple amounts of appeasement. Got to, got to have been worse. Yeah. Anyway, so I don't know why this is, this is my stepson's stuff, and it's the coldest thing in the fridge that I grabbed on the way out. Really, not that great a fan of it, but I will drink it because it is what there is. So what I have got is. A few things. I have got me the thing is thing is that the what do you call it is all silvered up. And the word I'm looking for is shielded. What I'm looking for now is some grippers, and I need to get my soldering iron up and ready. Now I'm going to use some small screws to um, line things up. So we've got to go, uh, we've got to put a switch in here, in the scratch plate. And for that to work, we've got to run a wire from the cavity up through here. So we need a long, some long wires or one long wire. Now, the problem with this is, it needs three wires. It needs the two ins and the one out to go up and back. 
sorry, two, well, three wires, two, two coming this way and one going that way. So that's three, uh, three wires. And sometimes people use things like, um, what do they use things like? They use things like, they use things like, um, special, well, you can get special cables. Sometimes people use the braided cable um, and you could get three braided cables together um, and then the, you can sort of use the shield on all of them just to touch them together and they can be uh, ground all the way through. So the only reason we need ground up here at all would be to ground this uh, cavity, which is not a bad thing to do since we're aiming to do everything. And of course, we would then want to ground a little bit on the inside of that too. So we might as well do that while we're at it. Um, and then we would have to make them touch each other at some point. Now, Andrew was saying something about, could we do this without this uh, scratch plate? Well, not exactly because the switch is gonna go in there like that. If we did it without the scratch plate, we'd have, still have to have a circular cover here to work. I'm just going to run this to there and cut along here. Come on. Yeah, so, I mean, so I don't know, I mean, it's a horrible conundrum that you can't you just, there comes a point where surely you can't just wait and hope that the, the wicked bully boy person is going to have enough, have their fill and then mercifully stop so you can breathe out, you know, and go back to normality. And I guess some people would say, well, isn't that what the Russians did at the, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis and, well, yes, in a way, but I mean, no, not in a way, because the, the reason that came to a head and the reason why it, I guess, it, I understand it, it went away is because the uh, the Americans gave a, a, a red line, gave them an ultimatum. I mean, apparently that the missiles were already there Etc. But the ultimatum still works in re in real in a real sense. So, um, and I think I think that you know there are people, people who would argue that that uh, that red light that challenge it only worked because there was a meaningful challenge, um, and that Khrushchev and his aides or whatever sort of added it all up and said, well, when it's all said and done, it's going to cost us too much, so we're not going to do this. Let's pull back from the edge. Um, and oddly, at the moment, we, don't, we aren't doing a similar thing to uh, Putin. So he's got no constraint or no, um, yeah, no, no constraint. Now, I'm just I'm just going through some things. Here's the sort of full length to get me through the cavities if I'm using three wires. But the downside of doing this is I'm still going to be looking for a wire to go through and ground all the way. So I might still want to use some braided cable because it will a it will carry a signal down the middle. And it will also carry a ground as well. So if I chop an extra bit of this, like so. <coughs> so I could use two lots of neoprene cut that stuff. Um, and I use, let's use white and yellow. This is nice rubbery wire, which is why I like, oops, is that really what I'm doing? Yeah, which I like to use this bendy stuff. So if I said that that's my, these are my principal wires to get through, the idea would be, how do I get through this? So yeah, I'd want to 
wrap it up. And the aim would be to get through there and there, and then this one could touch out on the anchor points here by use of the sheath on each of them. I can use that as a, a point. But my challenge is I've got to get all three bits through the end. So I'm going to get me through the holes. So I'm going to get me a piece of tape and I'm try and lock this off into a point which I can push my way through like so. Let's see how well we can go. And it's going nowhere to begin with. Fantastic. Here we go. Yes, so that's where we are. And who knows what happens next. But I don't, I don't feel very optimistic. That's all I'm saying. Um, I suppose this, you know, like everything, when you're not in control of something, I guess you can always argue that there has to be there has to be some element of choice in the matter about how you feel about it. You know, whether you remain optimistic, it's a choice of how you feel. Um, simple as that. Uh, and I guess it is. Um, and I guess what I'm saying is I, I can't argue myself into a particularly optimistic state of mind okay so there's my there's my through wires um, now the good thing about this is if I were to take this one off to here and take this one off to the side as well that's my me two hot signals coming from the pickups and here if I undo this down here I can do the same at the other end and then we can, I've got to do my diagram still. So I'll do that off camera in a minute and we'll come back when I'm ready to do it. And I could probably take a moment out to go and attach a decal to the first layers of the, whatever that stuff is called, nitro. So this one, I've got a bit of extra length here so I can pull this further through and then we can go off to the sides with the whites and the yellows and we can choose which is which when the time is right. We can keep them safely out of the way. There we are. So, so that's my, that will carry my, my signals to the switch. It will carry my output from the switch back and because of using one braided wire, I can use that as the ground continuous ground loop, uh, point throughout here. Now, question is, if I'm going to use that, what room have I got in the um, what room have I got in the pickup cavities in order to uh, fit a, a little grounding thing? So, if I take this and I say to myself, this is my uh, my neck pickup. Um, does it have enough wire? This is quite a long distance track. Yeah, okay. So so this has got to go through the hole as well. And I'll take it out again in a minute, but that's through there. And then we'll put that there, and then we'll go in there like that. So we can see a sort of limit to how far it can sit down, courtesy of these wires coming in. So it cannot sit completely flat on there and the bottom of the pickup, whether we want it to or not, is going to be touching, could be touching the braided wire. Can you see that? Groovy. I think we'll have to live with that. Um, if I were to uh, bring back the neck a minute and put that in there, I can't remember how high it sits, but it's at least high enough for a tunematic bridge. So. It's, that's got to be pretty much a good height. I think what we'll also do is we'll probably fit some rubber in there, which will also protect the underside. So I think with this, I think looking at the shape of this, there's no real space for these wires to be missed out. So they can sit wherever they sit. Um, here, they can also sit wherever they sit, but we can probably pull a bit extra back 
Um, the one that I'm really only bothered about is the uh, braided one, so I can hook it up to a, a, an anchor point on the foil to make the ground connection. So I would sort of look at pulling that one somewhere to there. I need to pull it through like that. Give it a little bit of room either side. So that might be my that might be my position for the two um, ground points. And for that matter, so what I use for ground points is I use a piece of metal that is completely useless that I don't like that I've inherited from other guitars, and it's these butterfly uh, string trees, which I really like reusing when it comes to ground points on other guitars. So I get the smallish one of those, a couple of them. Yeah, I'm exactly small. Oh yeah, here's a small one. So two smallish ones, and I'll use them to solder the, um, these wires too, and then I'll screw them into place. But to do it, I will I will flatten them out, um, and they just I can angle the what sides of the tabs so they just stick up a little bit. I don't want them to stick up for miles because I don't want them to get too far into the way of the pickups and so on. I don't want the pickups having to rest on them. But I can, normally if the pickup surround is a bit bigger, we can fit them on the sides, sort of out of the way. But unfortunately this doesn't really allow for that. So I'll get them as flat as I can. And I'm going to put them in my clampy things. Um, let's do them that way up. Oh, you can see there. Can you see them? Yes. Turn on the power on, heat on. Then, I'm going to get myself the finest possible, one of the finest screws and drill bits for this one. A bit big actually. Where's the smallest one? Oh, here it is. That's pretty small. That's tiny, but it will do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a drill bit point in each of these. And one in each of these cavities. One in here uh, against the wall. And then one over here in there than that, more space here, side of here. Okay, so that's given me enough for three, four of those anchor points. So I need a couple more. Done. I mean, you can just do straight to the, straight to the, what they call it, the, uh, the tin foil, tin foil, the copper. But I prefer to have these metal things that sort of holds them in place and it, it's far less likely to come undone from the from the foil. The foil is easy enough to rip at any point. <laughs> Excuse me. Right, so there's two more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the solder. Move this out of the way. Pick up this. Right, first thing. Let's put some really, whatever this stuff's called, tip cleaner. Well, it's called tip cleaner, but it actually looks like swarfy stuff because it makes it go silvery and soldery. But gives it a good clean up. There we are. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some solder onto, fairly loaded onto one side of these. Yeah. whatever they are called, them things, drop them, and then do two more. So it's a bit old fashioned, I mean, not old fashioned, yes, yeah, a little bit sort of agricultural doing this, but it's my way of making sure that the, the cavities are 
properly shielded. Clever people sometimes rely on the fact that the pots are touching the copper, which then is hopefully grounded. But on any guitar with tunnels, um, it's the, it's where the it's where the tunnels are that runs the risk of wires being subject to radio frequency interference. So you can't really fill in the tunnels with, you can sometimes, you can get a bit of the way in with paint, um, but most of the time you can't really reach very well. So I'm going to put this one down in there and get me thingy, too big a thingy. Get me a smaller thingy. just do is just make sure I think it's all right just gonna make sure that these solder tides are just up enough I've got to have them they've got to be a little bit clear of the the uh, body of the guitar or the copper because you need the heat to get into them adequately and I'm going to all right, nice and firmly in yeah because we've got to um, basically press down on the braided wire to get it connected. So there's the next one. So this is my way of making sure every cavity is going to be covered. And so can work as a shield, a Faraday cage. So next one, next one. Sticking up enough, yes. This one into the side up here. Uh, a little bit difficult to reach. Come on. It's where I feel like I've got fat fingers. Oops, I'm catching the wire behind there, we don't want that. Nice, nice. Those two, and one more here. Right. So it's a, I enjoy the reuse of the horrible butterfly string trees of doom that I hate. Okay, nice. So ground anchor points in every cavity established. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is, how much do I need of this wire? Ground, around to there. We need to go to there, actually. Okay, that's fine. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some... Oops, you're, you're out, of, out of sight. You're out of touch. I'm going to get some solder onto these here. Whatever those things are called. Braided wires. And try to get them to adhere to the earth points. So... Solder, uh, uh, solder. So after I've done this, I will take a short break to go and pay attention to the the um, logo and the nitro cellulose. So you can see I'm going to I'm aiming to try and load up this part of the braided wire with enough solder that it will grab hold of yep that should work it will grab hold of the um, solder on the tab and I'm going to do the same here hopefully in the right place and come at it from the other side Oh, 
big blob. Okay, so um, I'm going to get that connected first, and then I can pull in different directions a bit more, tidy the wire up. So here we go with the grounding onto here. A bit far away from the power supply at the moment with the solder, so it's a kind of the iron is a bit on the stretched side. So that's what we're hoping this is a good fix. We'll find out sooner or later. Okay, so that's quite a big chunk and it's quite tall. So um, we have to hope that the pickup sits comfortably on top of there without too much of, of a problem. And we just want this heat to go through the wire into the tab, there we are. So those two pockets, pockets, those two cavities now are earthed. And this one will be uh, a little later when I've stripped off this ground wire, attached it to there, and this, I think will make this the output wire. So I've got to do some de-threading here. Um, and then this one, comes all the way back to here. Now, it could, for, it could, um, well you wouldn't, the thing is, you, we're not gonna go across to there. Reason for that is I wanna go to the closest pot possible. I don't want this this earth wire trailing around inside of there. So, we'll probably find that this gets snipped off anyway. So that's fine. I'm gonna leave that to where it is for the minute. Okay, so that's good. Heading in the right direction. Let's turn the heat down or off for a bit. We'll take a pause and come back with my next plan of action. Um, see you in a sec. I forgot. That's what I'm doing next. And that is the decal. And this needs to be carefully put on to the headstock and gently dried out prior to leaving it. It has to be fully dried before we spray any more stuff. So I've dropped the decal in the thing. This is a really loved Aristocat logo. Um, similar to the one that Andrew had before, kind of. I haven't got any slashes left over. So I've got to re remind myself that this is left-handed and it's upside down, so uh, it goes. What the hell way does it go? <laughs> that way, yes. And then you play it, <laughs> play it, and it goes that way. That's the, no, that's the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, bottom, right. That's the bottom, so it's, so the tuner's down. So hard to figure out. Tune us down that way. So I'm going to put this on that way. And the question is, um, for a left-handed guitar, that's the high string, fat string, sorry. And that's the thin string, the opposite way round. So fat string goes up there. So we're not going to have any point at which there's no, there's any real place where the, well, there is a bit here. I suppose oh, it's coming off already. So there, is, yeah, there is a, a place where it it comes, it can sit without getting in the way of anything. Is what I'm trying to say without my brain working very well. Uh, uh, I'm gonna Thank you. So that string there, it's going to be over the string. Smaller strings there. We may or may not need um, string trees. We don't know at this point. So I think we probably just use up the space we've got and we can make the writing go parallel 
to the edge here, parallel, in line with. Okay, so let's have a look. Soak up the first bit. And look at it from another angle. Uh, line it up. So playing it downwards, there's a big string at the top. Okay, that's the best space for it. Bit of press down. And now you can't see because I've done a terrible piece of camera work again. One handed. What am I going to do? I am going to just carefully, carefully, very carefully, just ease out the moisture sideways. Um, flattening the decal as much as possible and that will help it in its drying process which will in turn will help to make it ready to spray the next few coats over the top now you can't you can't get it perfect on the first wipe down but there we have it Facing that way. Okay, that's that done. I'm gonna put that back out and tie the room. That's that bit, see you in a minute. I suppose you could be party to this thrilling insight into my brain. This is me inventing, uh, inventing a wire diring wiregram. So we have got a three-way switch. We've got a P90. And we've got a mini humbucker. And we've got one of these um, bridge. The neck bridge. So what we got, uh, imagination, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the neck volume, neck tone, right. One of those, one of those, one of those, one of those. That's all there is to it, finished. So we have got P90 and we have got two wires. So ignore these here, they don't matter to anything. So, so the idea is that the P90, so we've got uh, volume, 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 tone, tone. Is that how we're gonna work this? Get my brain right, get my brain right. Tone, volume, tone. Yeah, okay, neck volume, bridge volume, bridge tone, uh, neck tone, bridge tone. Okay. So, we can do this the standard old fashioned way. So, what we're going to have here is we're going to have this is going to be a phase, no, not phase, a series parallel, series parallel switch for the humbucker, which is the bridge. Okay, so we find the humbucker. I think I've already drawn this out, I already checked the wiring, and I've probably lost track of it. Served me right for not bringing the bleeding diagram, but we got we got the pairs already identified for us, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so I have to look up this because I forget this every single time. So let's do the bit we know. So we're going to go. No, let's let's look it up. Let's get the other thing. <laughs> this is how it really goes in real life. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for humbucker, 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 series, I can't write properly with this, series, parallel switch wiring. Like, then you get a whole load of things, none of which you, tr you trust. And then you keep looking until you find the one that you do trust. Uh, that one, for instance, uh, for phase, uh, series, pull, for series, no, no, uh, this one, no, worrying, 
this one no oh lord so there's so many different switchings series parallel master switch for two pickup guitar now we just want it for one that's two coils going to the same thing where's the simple diagram that i've used before and it makes sense to me well there's at least two ways it's drawn Never find the one I want. X. And I've already drawn it out somewhere. Wiring for series parallel coil switching with on on double throw, double pole, double throw, push pull pot. That looks the business to me, but that is the volume pot that that one's on. But the principle is the same. So uh, uh, hmm, we've got it down here, and so we've got it upside down according to this. Well, let's do that first of all and so what we've got here is the five wire humbucker and we've got the red white parallel series yeah yeah up and down we get that so yikes, we've got bear and black that's the turn what goes to ground so the white doesn't go to ground so in this diagram, this is a Seymour Duncan. I had to translate this across last time, which completely messed me up. But it looks to be the same. Seymour Duncan is red and white, red and white there. We've got green is the positive, we believe, and black is the negative. No, black is the positive, green is the negative. That's it. So green is negative. Right, we'll trust that to be the case. So red and white. So this one here is red uh, this one here is where's my humbucker oh, there it is white white this one here is white and that goes across to there um, this one is black that goes out to the out to the this is in the volume, isn't it? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, this goes out to the input. So it's to there. So this is the black. So it goes. That's black to the pickup. Out from the pickup, round to there. We're talking about volume, aren't we? Bridge volume, we're doing the bridge volume. So that's ground there. Grounded, so all volumes do that anyway. And this one will go this way around. Volume. So, volume, 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 that goes to there. So the red one goes into there. That goes out to my friendly pickup. What else have we got? We've got a green that goes to the top here. Thanks. Green the top and where does it go that goes around to, to the earth so the green the green comes in over the top like this green and it comes out and goes to earth out and goes to earth like that green out and goes to earth yes 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 so we've got red white green black Black, that one and this one is green green and this one is black hurrah so that is my series parallel switch and there's the output to the bridge volume fab so that is all I need to know because they're all truly the same so these this goes to here red I'm upside down now that's black <laughs> That's red, that's white, this is green, and there's a bear. Where's my bear, baby? Bear goes to solder, and there's a bear goes to solder. Now that can go straight to there. I'm gonna go as a dotted line for my bear. With a little B. So that, 
And ladies and gentlemen, is my upside down pineapple upside down wiring cake. Ah, so, oh, the P90 has a has a has a has a has a has a green and a black and bear. So the black and bear go to earth. Together, and the green, green, goes all the way. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> got me worried for a minute. Green goes all the way to there. Notice I've gone round the back. There's a reason for that. That's good. Now output from the bridge volume. And we'll go up to the switch here. And we'll go whichever side is whichever. So the output from the bridge volume goes all the way up here attaches there. The output from the neck goes all the way up there, attaches there. Hurrah! No, 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 silly, silly, silly. The output from the neck is that one. Ignore this. Ah, oh, it's terrible. This... Am I drawing this up? So Hmm. Can't remember which way around this is now. Bridge neck, turn, turn, bridge neck, bridge. Oh, hellfire. Can you believe this? I don't even know which way up and down my. Uh, uh, Firebird. I've completely confused myself. I may have to redraw this off camera. Firebird. That doesn't even say Firebird. Fire. Bird controls. Vindictive. Thank you. That doesn't work. Controls. Comeuppance. Firebird wiring. Maybe that'll help. So rear, rear, no, that's a modification. Thanks. What about just a good old fashioned? Oh, God. Isn't there something just straightforward? No. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? There's four pots in a funny order. That's not that order. Yeah. Okay, firebird. So can we just have a wiring diagram? Any chances of seeing... Thank you. Diagram. Gibson firebird diagram. Images, please. Right, uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Fralin, okay. Uh, thanks. Gibson wiring diagrams. Pfft. Is that it? Hum, hum. Can we just have a H hit now? Mm. Gibson Les Paul with P90s, fire enough. We get to see it in close up. Well, it doesn't tell me which is which, does it? Okay, so it's got. Oh God, it's gotten this way round. Um, volume, volumes, tones, tones. I'm gonna to have to redraw it. Sorry. You watch. I'm gonna come back and it'll be done. I just like magic. There's a the new one. Reworked, and that's what we're doing. Way. Now, let's have a look at what we've got in the bag. We've got, I think we've got, I think we've got, probably a few bits short. So we've got a 500k, 500k, uh, linear, that's A, A, A. And these are alpha, that's A, and 500K, and that's a A as well. So that, oh, sorry, these are Bs. So these are all linear, and that one is an alpha. The problem with that is it's going to have um, a slightly reversed, a reversed, could be a reversed volume thing. I've gone and drawn these plain right, right handed, haven't I? Oh, God. Clever me. I'm going to have to redraw this again. Watch this magic.
and miraculously, here is the left-handed version. And I've just sprayed the uh, headstock over the top of the decal, so I'll leave that dry, set, whatever it's got to do. Right, so I'm going to now start Placing my, what am I going to do? I'm going to place the, the pots first of all, I suppose. Pick up the pots and. Mm. Hmm. Right, so so we have, we have a small space to work in, I suppose. Let's have a look at this. I've, I've definitely done this the right way around, I know it. So we're going to go. Bridge. No, I've got. I'm short of washers and things, so I'm gonna have to borrow. Bridge volume is going to be the pull, push, pull, pull, push, pull pot thing. Let's see what we've got to grip onto things. Shall I do? Yeah, just about. It is. Not a lot of space. Oh, I've got two washers on here, let's see. Take one of these off. Boring stuff. Got a lot of fiddling about now. So I'm gonna get these in the right place. Uh, I think we'll struggle to get a bite on that if we use that in the way. So we lose that and go for a an extra washer, maybe. Let's see what we get. Two washers. Just to keep it, that's a better positioning. Okay. So, first of all, here we go. Sorry if you can't see this one. I'm just attaching the bridge volume. I shall get my now the thing about this is I probably would ought to yeah hmm. I'm gonna do as much as I can outside first that's the tricky part um, and I could probably probably better work out what's needed outside so this one this one goes Mm -hmm. Bridge volume. That one. Let's try and make the other one. So we have a reverse log, which is that one. That's got enough things on it. We'll take take this tab off because that won't help. That's a reverse one. That's good. So I'm wondering. We shouldn't just make up a make up a. Plates to do our work on here. So let's get a bit of spur, a bit of cordwood. Uh, now I'll plug these into some cardboard. And that could should, could, should help us to, um, help me, me, help me to get it right. Now I want to poke a hole with these. Yeah. Let's see if we can get these fixed together as much as possible. Nice. 
fiddle, 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 fiddle. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, I'm going to tighten them up. Which way up am I going? Help. Uh, right, 500k. B. Bridge volume. Bridge volume. Followed by the reverse taper, which I'm doing for neck volume, which is going to be a bigger pot. That's okay. We'll just force it through. Stay on. Thing, oops, the thing is, if I can get the majority of this done outside, it, it means you can hook them all together at the right space from each other, and then you can you can sort of stiffen them up as well if you if you use a what was the one I'm looking for? Use some wires to connect them up, which we've got to do anyway. Wow, really? Is that the only space I've got? Holy moly! Um, there's not a lot of room. There appears to be no space at all between these. So that was the first problem. I, I thought I checked it for full size pots um, because as I mentioned a minute ago, first thing you can often find is when you upgrade from the originals that they gave you and you go to full size pots uh, because we're changing the pickups you see mm. speaking of which the person who asked me if i would be willing to let them have this um these leftovers i checked with andrew and he said they're welcome to have the old stuff um, which we weren't going to use. So he never contacted me again. So I take it it wasn't that important. It's a pity, really, because I kept them out separate already. Present and correct. Not the ideal one, but uh, this will do for now. Okay, so there's very little room together. These things are sitting bunched up like no nobody's business but we'll make it work see that we'll make it work and i'll just lift it up and drop it back down in in a chunk mm, come on is this actually is this even going to fit probably the wrong size at which point i'm glad to have a supply of crazy nuts. This will probably be too big. Maybe not. No, that's good. Hmm. Okay, so point being here is I'm going to get these all into as near a place as I can get that could work together. Looks a bit like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put everything away that isn't needed. Tons of spares, always good to have. Boring things that you don't ever really think of um, collecting up and putting into little containers, things like endless nuts and washers, but it's so handy when you realize you haven't got the thing you think you need. Okay, so, so first of all, I'm gonna stand this up out of the way. And I'm going to look at the, the basics of this setup and um, I'm trying to move you around a little bit. So I can put you here, look you down at there and see what you can see. See, there you go. Right, there's my diagram, left hand handy. Obviously, I can't hook up anything from the outside that can't be hooked up yet. I sort of know what I mean by that. Right. Um, components, 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 none, 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 none. I have got solder. I need some capacitors. 100, no, 223 capacitors. Let's see what we are. 
Two, two, threes. Oh, these are handsome ones. Let's see. Two, threes. Now I'm going to use two because I prefer using two. Don't ask me why, I just do. Right, uh, ground, ground, ground. That one goes to ground. We know the green goes to ground. Huh. Hmm. So, so the first things I'm going to look at are, take this out of the way. Let's bring the soldering iron a bit closer. Closer. I seem to have marched my way right over to that side of the table for some inexplicable reason. But I'm there and I'm staying. Okay, so that can be out of the way because it's getting in the way. That can stand up out of the way. Right, we've got various things. We've got a switch over here that's got to go in uh, into the into the scratch plate thing. And I'm going to set the scratch, set the switch up a particular way, and then I have to just work out which way up it is, and I never can work it out. So here we have this. Um, off come the that. Through there goes the this. And I'm going to put it that way. It's going to be well, what normally would it be? A front to back switch or an up and down switch? Front to back, up and down. Well, the list pull is normally up and down, so I guess it's an up and downy switch. So let's go with that. Yep, the normal way. Right. Just tighten this up. Good, good. Right, ready for when it's ready. Put that aside. Okay, so heating up, heating up. Now we're going to, this is all left handed, so we're going to attach some uh, left handed of these. <laughs> and they're very close to the edge. So I'm going to try and bend them up like so. The idea being we can get that one in there. Not a lot of room, is there? So we can, I mean, we can go in strange opposite directions and we'll just make it keep things out of the way of each other. So that one goes there and that one goes there, like so. So we can get that in place. <laughs> so I don't know how well you can see that, but here's the first connection going on. Now this spare piece of wire it's going to come in handy for somewhere else. But the next thing we've got to do is, sorry about this, this now looks possible, but I'm, you're out of focus. You're out of focus. You're in focus. I must remember to tweak the focus while I just do this one up. Do it up like a keeper. Come on, come on, get some heat into there. I've got nothing to grip onto, which is a pain. Come on, there you go. So that one in place. Um, refocus, if you would, thank you. Then we do the same with this one. So let's bend it that way, cut it short. And find a way. Oh no, it's not that one, is it? Oh, it's this one. Get right. Thank you. Tongue, tongue, tongue. 
10, page 10. here to the side sorry if you can't see this I'm just guessing that you can see now because moving around is too difficult so there's me there's me two me two what's it that's nice they can sit there like that or they can sit sort of like that if they have to um, so you can keep an eye on them in both in the same ways. Right, so we got volumes and volumes. Bridge volume. So we need some things now. So this is the left hand, left hand thingy up. Normally it's on the right hand side, but on this one we're going onto the left hand side on the volume. Earthing it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Earthing, earthing it. Can I do this? Can I do this? No. Can I do this? That's it. Ooh, look at that. What a great cinematic view. Not. <coughs> oh, yeah. Right. So grounding the lug, first lug to itself on this here volume, volume pot, like so. And then. This bit here, like so, and that's that grounded to itself. And cut off this bit and this bit. So sorry about this. There's a little bit more needed in there to close it up. I hate leaving partly open lugs. Closed. Now, this one has to do the same down here, but it's much more difficult to do. <laughs> so, so I'm going to stand it up here for a minute where you can't see it very well. And I'm going to sort of put it there. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't. And I'm going to go to here right okay. oh, don't mind that and then fill that one um so that means the casing of the pot now is grounded so we can join other things onto that whenever we want. Get this one to go and fill up. Thank you. Okay, so my two volumes, one of which is a push pull, are done. Well done there. They're grounded in the ground lug. Right. Hurrah. Now we're gonna need we're gonna need some wire that joins them all up and I'm gonna use some the cut the piece of braided wire and use the inside bit for that so we can have sort of fairly stiff wire. So we're gonna join four of these up. One, two, three, four. Make sure they're all grounded all the time. And this sort of holds them together as well, which is quite handy. So we can, to, sometimes I think to keep it out of the way, I like to do it on the edge, but it means you can't see it very well unless I get my fabulous viewing thing out. And this is me just working as a, completely double chinned as I can do. So I'm going to just ladle some solder onto each of these so I can follow around with my wire. Which 
so I'm working left-handed now, which isn't good. And I haven't got any, haven't loaded this wire at all with any solder, which is another silly thing. If I want it to work. Let's begin with a bit of loading. Excuse me for a minute, I'm off camera. Come on, lump of that. With a bit of luck, we can get the first. I'm going back to front here, which is really stupid. Right, there's the first connection. Now, the problem is, it's going to sort of fix it in whatever position we do or don't want. So let me just tighten this up. Oops, a bit more. And it's going to keep on spinning. Keep on spinning. Keep on spinning. Sorry, I can't see anything. Get around the edge, and then we can line up some more solder. And then some more around this side. Okay. You can see, uh, yes, there we are. Sorry, not very good view, but I'm doing my best. Nearly there. So this is ground. Aha, this is where it's going to catch me out. The little devil. So this is where it wants to catch me out. Hmm. Um, because that's the ground wire, it's going to touch in against that one because it wouldn't normally do that. It would normally be the other way around. So unless this turns inwards a bit more, but then it's still gonna barely, I need a little bit of, whatever that thing is, a little bit of shielding, shielding, shielding. Got any here, any here, any here, any here. Right, I'm just going to help myself along a bit here. So we'll go from here to there. <sighs> Which will just give me a little, a little out. Right, I'm just going to take it away and heat it up a second. Bear with me. Enough. 
Now, cheated a little bit, but that will do. Right, you come on there. Sorry. Can't see what you're seeing much. Right, you turn around to there. You get on there. You fill up on there. You hold it in place. You harden off, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Rescued that from risk of touching out. So, there are, are our first connections. So that's going to keep that in place. Um, where are we now? Okay. So next, um, what am I looking for? Things I've got I can do in advance. Things I can do in advance. Capacitors in. Uh, the wire all done up. Grounding wire done up. Um, what else can we do? Uh, so the difficult bits on this are going to be hooking up these very small wires here so um, there's going to be for example a wire jumping across and there's going to be a wire coming in and both in and out of at least two of these so the green wire comes in and a, another wire comes out and they're going to be incredibly thin wires um, now the problem with that is they're going to be incredibly difficult to do down in the hole so um, There's a way of doing them out here, but that means we have to join up wires outside. But we could argue that it's not a bad way. So let me go and see if I can find some pickup wire that I can strip out because if we can get some very fine pickup wire, uh, we might have to sacrifice an old bit of pickup for this. If we can find some old pickup wire, it gives me a handy, Head start. Who are these? I have no idea. Nameless pickups, but oh no, they're not in small wires, are they? Let me see. No, this is this is three wire pickups. We want the spindly, fiddly spindly ones. Fiddly spindly. What am I never going to use? Well, that's a two wire one. What's this? Uh, that's, is that five by one? It's got 15.3 exclamation mark written on it. The problem is it's hardly got any extra wire. So I'm just, what I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of how little room I've got, and that's a two wire one anyway. Conscious of how little room I've got. And I would rather give myself a little extra wire coming out of these things than to, um, see, I don't know is but this has got multiple wires let's let's borrow some of this there you go um yeah i'd rather give myself some extra room so thank you anonymous pickup so i've got some little multiple colored bits okay okay so um Standard swap type of colours. So what it means is I could at this point now wire up my my little coloured bits that I know I've got to go in there. So for example, a um, a white going in and coming out the same lug, and then a, a black going in and coming out, and then I'll end up with little bits hanging out. So in and out. Um, I can't unfortunately do it with one piece like strip in the middle and do it so i'll do i'll cut it in half there's my two black pieces and i've got red goes in stays in white jumps across so i need one long white and a small white but we can use both sides sizes for now and then the green has to be split so the black is split the white is split and the green is split and that gives me a chance now to set these up before i put the pots into that very um, constricted space right so and the tr tricky bit here maybe I'll if 
find a way of propping this up now. The tricky bit coming up is that uh, you can see, uh, yeah, there you can see the pot that I'm going to work on right there. Okay, so that push push pull pot is where I'm going to do the the fun stuff. The other stuff I'm probably going to still have to get into inside the hole, and I need to be able to get a simple access to the big lugs, but it helps if I'm not trying to get access past all these little ones. So it could be argued that having something hooked up to the, the bigger lugs is a good idea too. So what have we got? Well, one goes out to, one of them is the one that goes out to the switch from the middle of each of those. So we could have uh, sections, what did we say went out to the switch? Well, we had a yellow and a white, didn't we? So we could make the yellow um, be one that we can join these as well. And that just means that we, we would avoid having to climb in the hole to do it. So it might be a smart move. Sometimes it's just easier to join and put a bit of shrink wrap, shrink wrap, shrink tube around something than it is to try and get your hand in there and get to the bottom of an already crowded place. So now while we've got access, if I decide that what have I said in this picture? Well, I don't know what I've said. I haven't said anything yet, but let's let's give ourselves the start that, what should we call it? Should we call, should we call neck white? And let's call neck white and bridge yellow. No logic to that at all, but neck white and bridge yellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all, put a little bit of, tin on the ends of these keep you won't be able to see that because you're off to one side but I'm going to tin these and then I'm going to get them into these difficult to reach places before I put the little spindly wires into place and then if I don't want them if I figure I can get in later on I can remove them and, and go in with the original wires but for right now I can I can do my best to get things done in front up front, in front. So, what did I say? Bridge white. Let's write that down because I'm bound to forget it. So we go. Bridge equals white. Neck equals yellow. That's how it's going to be. Up to the switch. We can move it around if we don't like it. So, neck yellow. Right. So here's my output. First of all, from the neck, and I can go this way. There's no reason why not to, leaning backwards, because we might just remove that in the end anyway. Okay, so that's, that's a, a connector for the yellow for the neck, yellow neck, yay. All right, now we know that blue, no, white, uh, white is going to be, do the same for the bridge. But now you can see already, this is difficult to get to. And imagine if we were trying to get down into here with everything else, all these little spindly wires sticking out. So again, for the time being, I'm gonna come in from the back here, cause I can, there's no reason why not to, and I'm gonna, Hook this round, if I can, and emerge through the front. Sorry, I'm going to reposition you in a second. Mm, I just want to play ball right now. Okay, there we are. We're through there. So, yeah, you can probably see what I'm trying to do. Right down the bottom there is the ah, bridge output, which we know is white. Again, I come in here and I can reach it without too much fuss. If I want to help it through a little bit, I can. Theoretically push it into place a bit. That feels okay. So again, that's behind, comes out behind, out of the way, but it's there for us to use. So that's the outputs to 
That's extra outputs to the jack, no, to the three-way switch. Now we know that green comes in. So let's take the green and the green is, we could possibly get these two wires together if we're very careful. So let's get, strip the green back. You can't see me doing this, but the one I want to end up with is two very thin wires on the end of the green things. And if I can roll them together, then I can get them both in the same hole in the micro switch or the double pole, double throw switchy. If I can do that, then it saves me worrying. And I think I probably can. Now, the question is whether I need to tin them first. So we know that the greens go in the top and come out and one of them comes around the top and goes onto the ground. So let's do a tiny bit of tinning first. So I can just keep them tied, tied together. Excuse me. And then I'll cut a little bit sideways. I don't want them too long because I don't want them pushing through and touching the other side of the switch. So now I have a, mm -hmm, a little tiny, tiny bit. Now we know it goes top side here. And that will hopefully go all the way through. But it doesn't want to stay there because it wants to just fall out thanks to gravity. So, oops, there goes gravity. So we can either bend it across like this. Sorry, losing camera view, I'm sure. Right. So there's a... Something like that, yeah. It's not the best view because you're still sort of just slightly ob obliterated, no, ob obstructed. So now I go down to here and I try to put a blob of solder on there. And having done that, I then take off any extra. So there is our two greens going in the right place, like it. I don't mind joining these up once we're in place. So the next thing we've got to do is we've got a black coming in and going out to two places. Now each of these, by the way, I can I can take it to its correct place right now, so I don't have to go far. So this, this for example, only has to go to the top of the pot to ground itself. So it comes in from the uh, ground on the pick up the green on the pickup and I'll put some put a little bit of solder on here and then we'll just put it to the top of the pot and that that's that half of it done and the same kind of thing goes with this black when it goes into the um, this one here that goes across so we can also put that into connection with the um, connected up to the tone circuit Right, so this is going to go to a piece of ground on top, so I can give it a bit, bit of extra uh, stuff. Oh, I, sorry, I don't know what you can see now. I'll get to that. Right, so really, this can just go to here and stay comfortably on top there, like so. Probably just as easily have done it on the little tag that uh, sticks out the front for exactly that purpose. It doesn't have to take so much heat. There you go. That's my grounded, that's my earthed, what's it, with the spare one to connect up. Uh, so the next one we have is the blacks. And the black, one of the blacks is going to go to the lug on the right hand side. So that then will go to across to the tone pot. So again, I'll connect these two black, two ends of the black wire up, join them together to go into the micro switch lugs, tin them up so they stay joined. One second, tinning bit that you can't see. Can't see the switch either. 
to a lot of fiddly stuff. And really the only reason I'm having to do this is because of how little space there is in this kit. And then putting, um, putting full size pots in there has reduced that even further. Okay, so the black comes in on the top right hand side of the switch. Let me just check that back. Yep. And then the next part of the black, one piece sticks up in the air like the green one. And the other piece goes across, goes down to the um, down to the lug number one. So we only need a short length on there too. Now this is going to join with another short wire. Uh, probably could have been, in fact, it could actually be this tiny little bit here. So we'll use the black again. These are very, very small fiddly wires, but they'll do. The real challenge with such delicate wires is really when you come to move things around, um, like placing these, uh, placing these pots into the into the cavity. That's the point at which if they're going to break, they'll break then. So that's not much fun. I don't know what we're doing in terms of video footage or time. Right, I'm going to just tam um, thingy, whatever the word is, these bits, tin. Ah, fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Tiny bit of tinning here. Thank you. Tiny bit here. Thank you. Get that in the cleaning thing. This is taking longer probably than I had had planned, but it's a very small little connection going on here. So the first one is going in there like so, <laughs> right, in there like so, if you can get them in, get it in, right, you just go there, so delicate, that's the only problem. Okay, that one in there. Snip the excess off. Sorry about the view a minute. Excess cleared. Right, we've got the spare bit sticking out to do its business. Then we've got a double down to, I need the, I need the pokers for this. Spare bit doubling down into the input um, not fiddly. okay Let's solder up that bit and then we jump across with the spare bit that's sticking out there Excess. <coughs> clear, clear. And then this next bit jumps across to the middle, which is just nicely lined up with a bit of spare. Jumps across to the middle here, which is so flimsy, but that's where it's got to go. And then we can. It's going to go into the middle of the tone. That's the input from the to the tone, I should say. So then we just. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So that's the that's the whole of the bottom line taken care of. That's the output, the input. Black is the input. Um, oh, we've got the white next to do. So the white comes in and just jumps across. So there's not a lot of complicated things, but the white hangs out to connect up to the existing white as it comes in from the pickups. Again, giving us the room to couple these up. You can always, principle here being is you can always put in, push in some, um, tuck in some wiring 
um, that will always fit in that cavity, but you can't get the hot soldering iron in there if it's not enough space, but you can always tuck in, there's always enough room to tuck in a bit of spare um, cable. Uh, probably could have gone across there in a single jump, but let's take a piece of this and we'll go in and curl. white one that's right that can stay there that one's there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes it's definitely longer than I predicted but it's this extra planning business that's taking the time right. get in the hole thank you right cut this that's going across to another hole standard that's going in there, that right. So we go into the middle and we go across. So the first one goes into the middle here. And again, one of the difficult ones to hold in place without having to bend it. So that's what we have to do, like so. Then it pulls the plastic or the rubber too close for my liking. Let's try that. I don't want to melt tons of rubber. I just want to get the wire to fit on. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little bit blobby that one, but hey. Sneak in there and try and snip this excess off. Sorry, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, right. <laughs> right, and the white, extra white bit doubles down and connects across to the bottom, right, which is, I could have done it with a single little piece of bare wire, because there's no real reason why not to, um, but I thought I will use this thin stuff that I've been using in a similar way. Right, so double check, we've got, um, oh, there's a red wire still to go, I thought as much. So red wire just comes in the side there and then we'll save a bit of extra wire. Uh, we'll go to there and we'll go to about there. So. We'll just tin this bit. And once this red wire is connected, that's the most complicated wires inside this whole arrangement. And we can then consider putting the whole lot into the body cavity. And the real, like I say, the real talent, uh, talent challenge is going to be getting it into place in a way that doesn't bust any of these little delicate wires. So that's going to be the, the hardest bit. So there we have the red wire, which will connect to our pickup red wire in however we want to do it. I think it's just going to be so much easier than trying to do this inside the cavity. And that will just start melting down the components and me at the same time. Okay, so there's our various useful little wires. We've got outputs outputs to the outputs to the switch um, we've got four little ones to the humbucker um, we've got to still get in there to put in uh, get into certain places to get the um, now it's a black one from the hmm, black one from the black one from the humbucker so we, again we could make everything connect up with cable connectors but I think we should be able to reach into these big lugs I think it's getting this 
Getting the uh, fiddly ones done is the hardest bit. What I'm just going to do now is I'm going to pick a spot on here and I'm going to do a couple of... Um, I'm going to do a couple of grounding points. Um, and we want the... We want, the, we want there to be a grounding point coming in here. Neck volume, where does the wires come in? Neck volume, yeah, neck volume's gonna take the braided wire as soon as it comes in. So I want that to be grounded here. I don't want it going any further to run the risk of um, shorting anything out. So that's the first one. And then somewhere else, there's an opportunity to put one here to get the bridge ground onto it and keep that safely out of the way. Come on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and then we've got, that one's done. We need a jumper across to there, which we haven't done yet, but we'll do, we can do one end of it now. Let's get a little black wire if we've got any. Oh, spark. Sorry, a bit of this. this shrimp will bleed right so i'm going to go from the neck volume end to the mid here which is the jumper basically jumping from the input on the neck volume across to the treble uh, the pot tone pot get the right words so i'm going to tin both ends of this and get it Place. One one part of it won't be soldered just now. It'll be loose, but it'll be kind of sticking to the sticking through the hole. Ready? When we connect the P90 up to it, uh, that will be the easy bit. Okay. So this one is just slightly in the way. So let's move that. Then we'll come up here into there like so. Stay round about there for a minute. So, so on these tone circuits, on the tone pots, the, the um, number one lug is empty on each of them. Okay. So I'll cut that, trim that back. Thank you. And then this, well, and this doesn't have to be this long even, but yeah, we'll just put it there for now. This will come back up through that lug, remembering that it isn't soldered. I mean, we could put a black wire in there that connects up to the uh, goes on and connect up to the um, the word I'm looking for is hot output from the P90. But I don't have any more black at the moment of that kind of rubbery stuff. So I think, unless I've got some here, I won't do it. Otherwise we'll end up with far too many millions of um, shrink wrap things. I mean, there's a little bit of black wire here. I mean, that would, if I did that, that would mean there's no more soldering into this space here that would be quite impressive wouldn't it everything's pretty well ready to go and the output from there touches on top of there where does it go after that grounds there but it goes on out to the jack that's right and then actually it can go all the way couldn't it yeah, but don't want it to cross there uh you could take it all the way Right, anyway, let me stop being so silly. Let me take a bit of this out and we'll have, we'll, we'll have this ready and we'll solder in. So everything's waiting to be connected up, which means we can put everything in place in controlled conditions. That's my plan, and my story, and I'm stickling to it. So that means I just get these little fellows out of the way and it means I can put this one through there doubled up with that one. And when the two of them are soldered together, we shall be ready to go. 
Uh, that's the hot, hot in from the her, uh, and that is a hot in from the her, uh, right. I think that should do. All right. So, there is my little pretty wired left-handed kit. Output from the P90 comes in there. Uh, that goes out to the switch. That goes out to the switch. That comes in from the humbucker. That's the hot signal from the humbucker. That's the, this is one of first coil, start, finish, second coil, finish, ground. Um, oh, there is one thing that comes from the humbucker, which we will have to stick right to the top of this, and that is the bare wire. And the same happens in both of these, got to take the bare wire. So, he said, reminding himself more than I think, if I just do a couple of more bits on here, I don't want to add an extra dangling wire because there's no real point. So what I think I'll do is if I, if I imagine that the bare wire, actually the bare wire needs to, it needs to end up on here. We don't really want it in the danger of touching anything. The bare wire needs to ground as soon as possible. That's the problem. And I don't want to bend these too much more. So let's add a bit more on there. So we can ground out the bare wire there from the humbucker um, and then we can bring that to there. Okay, something like that. And then maybe we'll have another wire on here. Possibly. Ugh, that's not what you want to do. See, melting the black wire. Right, those are ready-ish. So if I get rid of some bits and pieces from here, in my wiring diagram, I think I might just look at, I'm gonna run out of time now, but I'll be here forever. What is it? Wow. Uh, Take those wires out of the way, take those out of the way. So really, what I sort of want to do is, if I can, I want to really place this in its correct place. Let's get rid of these bits. So, We've got to do a number of things here. I don't know why we're doing picture wires. We've got to get the hardware in, no, the thingies in there. We've got to get the pickups through in place. So I think we probably ought to start with that. So in the land of pickups, we have got a range of, a range of bits and pieces. We have a surrounding, now this goes on like that. It's going to have to sit as well, best as it can fit. So the point is, this cannot sit flat. However it's going to go, it's going to sit like that. And somehow it's going to go through there, along with all of this, which is going to get a bit crowded. So this has to, theoretically, this has to sit on a, sit on the rock bottom of some sort, but it's going to need to come up. So that isn't going to be very even because it's got some wires to sit on. Unless we take a chunk of this bottom part out, which we probably ought to do. Now, why wouldn't we? Um, it doesn't take much, actually. It just needs a little bit out from this section, from there to the corner. What would I do it with? Well, I could do it with this soldering iron, just to make enough 
It won't be seen, it's hidden. I'll do this there, I'll go to there, I'll go to the top right hand corner. Right, it's just enough to clear these wires, that's the main thing. That one won't matter because it's standing above them on some rubber. So I'm just melting this bit down a little. do with this being a little bit tidier I have to say it's annoying me somewhat um, probably ought to have a grinding wheel but I haven't got one so let's try this baby <sighs> This one here, that's that way, that's that way. Let's find some things. So that's supposed to be hung from there. So one of these goes into, that's got to go into the wood, like so. Okay, <laughs> those are for that. This is for this, and these are for those. Okay. <sighs> You go there. You go there. Hard work. Uh, sorry, not very good. That one there. This one here. Of course, I've got to get the neck one through first so let's not get too tied up with the bridge one because if I can't get the neck one through I've got to rethink okay so there is the bridge one which we've got to bring up minimum of that height and we've got those bits of that's the way around come on so now we're going to try and get this through but not yet not yet so this one could do with being on some rubber because that's going to have to sit there and to go up and down on some foam not rubber foam we've got some foam here is that the right kind of foam we could Make it the right kind of foam. Two pieces of that. How tall? So much so like that. And so, so. Wise. Okay. 
like so, and a bit up there. Right, a bit like that, a bit like that. Similar height, what are we looking at? Similar height, a bit fatter. Should be able to fit that sort of like that. Very good. Need some double sided tape. The problem with this is it's going to have to go that way around, which is, yeah, that's the right way. So we need some double sided sticky tape. Sorry, I don't even know what you can see here. Uh, yep, there we are. We'll get this. Get this. Um, stuff on the tape Ugh. you go upside down you go on there like that you go on there like that much all right spare stuff spare stuff spare stuff bin bin right next hit the neck pick up that's not the neck the neck's going to be sprayed again right neck pick up <coughs> neck pick up here we have it these two neck pick up through there let's go Okay, big chunks of foam. Now this is always a, a little bit hit and miss. There's only one place they'll fit. that's too high you may have to take down the I suspect it is too high Oops. There's a limit to how much down how much down we can take it. There we go. That's about it. I can't do it anymore. So in the whole time that you're doing this, getting wires to go through and catching them and pulling them out the other end and so on, you're sort of reaching a point where you can't go any further. 
that's it. It's sort of the positions of the... Positions of the pickups are sort of fixed. And I can see that there's some sort of scratching that it could even be splitting on the cover of this. That is about as low as it's going to go. Ladies and gents, now if I can, I will go through here and I need to be able to get one more wire through there as well. And the time is right. Blimey. I do not entirely know whether this next one's going to go through the way I want it to. And this is an absolute bummer. If that doesn't go through, then we have a real problem because the problem is, can I get all of this out again in order to drill a wider hole? And that is not much of a fun prospect, I can tell you. Come on, get through. Please come through. Something trying to press through here. Something kind of come through. You, know, you can do it. Let's try and let's try and encourage it. Come on, you can do it. No, not that piece. Don't hold on to that, you critting. <laughs> this one. Jeez, whiz. <sighs> Thank you. Goodness me. Goodness gracious. So that one should sit in here sort of quite comfortably. There's not a lot of room to align it. So if I say, how about, how about there? It says, okay, I fancy that. We go there. Now that, for all I know, that could have gone through a wire that's already there. So I'm afraid I don't know. We shall know. So that's sticking down. It's not really an ideal pickup to round for this. I just have to hope it hasn't punctured anything. Let's have a look, shall we? I mean, if it has, you have to restart, reconsider. No, yes, no, has it gone through anything? No, nope, I've managed to avoid it. That's pretty good. <sighs> Except it's still trying to catch it there. Damn, can I get... No, the white, you don't want to get the white through there. Ah. Damnations. Can I go through there? Any chance? Swing it around there, maybe go around there, possibly. Uh, right, that's going into the hole, which is okay. That's sticking into there, which is probably not quite long enough. Blimey. There's almost nothing to hold on to there. <clears throat> My concern is that this needs to be a bit taller than everything else. <clears throat> that sits very low. Nothing I can do about it though. It's right there. 
Uh, there's no taller way of doing it. That sits there. And then this can come up. But I think what's happening is that that is going down into the little hole. Which means really we're going to need to cut those off. Which is now a double pane. What's some call it? So, so these are no good to us. Off you come. Don't need any of that extra height. So that surround height is going to be there unless there's a sponge or something underneath it, which there isn't. So that holds it in place. And this will allow us to come up as far as it will go. I think that's putting the spring under far too much pressure. I think that's not good for it. Mounting things directly to the um, wood is a pain in the sea. Now that, I'm hoping, will come out and cut its way through the thread. We'll get rid of half of that because that's now it's way too long to do any good. Come on, thank you. It's too ready to go. <sighs> Back on here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Right, this has ruined this, completely screwed the thread now. Not the thread, the head. Ah. Honestly. Christ. It's just insane. I hate this sort of technology. I really do. This is just so crude. It's beyond belief. I might be able to get it done up for now, but I might also be searching for a replacement. When I don't blast it, well, no. Depends what the thread is going to be like. Come on. Thank you. Holy moly. Such grief. Right, that's that. Sit in there. Get back to here. I hate doing things with sort of really crude director body finishing because it ends up in this sort of situation. <sighs> right. Right, so which is which? Okay, that's neck. We know that's neck. <sighs> I 
I forgot, I haven't got round to the jack yet. <laughs> That's the bridge. Okay, so we said here that we said the neck is yellow. So we'll go put those two together and we'll put these two together. Bridge is white. Red is the um, general earthiness. Okay, now we could place these little darlings back in their place. And we've got everything tied up there. Right, let's get this into the right way round. It's going to sit in there like so. We're now going to carefully remove the... Uh, Ah, it's one of these chunkier than the others. End up having to, and that's there. Might end up having to remove some material from one of the holes. In other words, in other words, that was the word, reaming it out a bit. So that's there. And that's there. Right, if I can get this in place tonight, I'll be vaguely happy. And this one is there, goes there. And this one is somewhere, goes somewhere. Always found is doing wiring, your hands get really dirty. Something about these pots that is inherently quite filthy. Ah, that goes to that side. Now we go, let me prod those out of there. And this one is a bigger, oh, that goes some bits. That's got some bits, right. So there's all our stuff. That one has a different diameter that we need now to measure and cut ream okay that's a 10 so we'll leave those standing on there so we've got to get this one to 10 can't find his reaming thing uh, <laughs> um it's going to be quite obvious where it is, and yet I can't see it. Ah, did I take it somewhere with me on another mission? Probably did. Right now, it could be anywhere. Twasix. thing. Oh, hellfire. Oh man, I could do without this now. Not there, 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 not sitting there. Somewhere else. Not there, not there. Not in there, not in there, not there, not there. Ten mils, I can do it with this, I suppose. Ten mils. That's an absolute annoyance. Somewhere, I've taken it out for a walk recently, used it, placed it back somewhere like that here, and then mislaid it. And it's contained in a box that I took home. Short of clearing everything up, I'm not gonna find it. So that's that sorted out. Well, maybe I, I'll, I'll do it with this, and then it might be time to stop. <laughs>
that may be what the world is telling me. Okay, reality check. So, so we have this here. No, it's not like that, it's like that. Neck volume, bridge volume. So, let's see, that one up there, that one up there, that's gonna be neck volume, right? Yeah, neck volume, bridge volume. Neck volume, bridge volume. Neck volume is gonna be 10 millimeters. Okay, you know it. Slightly larger hole. Right now, what we've got to guess is the bleeding depth of these things. Now, uh, that isn't going to need one. That might, because that's a bit longer. That's sitting on where it is. That I was going to get one. I was going to get two. No, I wasn't going to get any. That was going to go there. This one feels like it needs stopping off. Oh, that's the wrong size. That's the wrong size. Where? That's the wrong size. They're all the wrong size. Where's the bleeding nuts for that one then? Tiny nuts, where are you? Okay, good, there's one. Tiny nuts, tiny nuts, there's a second. Ugh, come on. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the worst, it must be the worst bit of video filming anyone's done, ever. Get out of my way. Come on, on you go. Right, so that's, that much, that's that much, that's that much, that's that much, that's that much, mm, sort of. So put that there. No, we've got a bit on the outside we need. Uh, shall we, shall we see how that sits? The problem is, is shoving it backwards and forwards. Just looking at them all. The shortest one is that one. Let's see what happens. Oh, don't tell me you don't fit through these. Oh. No, God, please, no. They don't fit. What sort of holes are these? This one I need now. That's eight. Eight, and that's smaller. So that one is smaller. That's six. Let's just double check this. They're all different bleeding sizes, aren't they? That's six, seven. That goes through fine. The rest of them are eights which is on here. So that one's an eight. No, that one's uh, next to the big and that one's, that one's that one, then go that one, that one, that's fine. These two are eights, which we have here. And pretty much on 
mark, I should say. Just enough, barely enough, that's not enough. Shakes. Right, get these off for starters. You're coming off, mate. So slightly rocky. You can go there, you can go there. So I'm getting there, possibly. Or just about big enough to fit in here. Okay, you're in there. You're there. You can go there. Access, clear access, clear access. We are so close. <laughs> sort of. Only all of this to connect up, but that's dead easy. I think I'm going to switch off at this point and um, carry on just for a, a, another half hour or so. Um, with the radio on, I need a bit of headspace. So anyway, you've seen the fun and games. <laughs> and... Um, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just carry on. Um, here comes the output, there goes the input. Nothing up there yet because we haven't got that up there yet. It has to be there and it has to go through the thing. And we tie that to that and put it on there and then everything goes right, fine. Yeah, we'll 
we'll get there. All right, I'm going to go off for now. Thanks for watching. You've been very patient. Bless you.